3 times 10 to the negative 3. Is this equal to A, B, C, or D, or E? So now is your chance to pause the video if you'd like to try this out, and whenever you're ready, we'll go over the answer. Okay, so one way to look, about, to look at this question here is to realize that we have 10 to the negative 3. So since it's 10 to the negative 3, I'm going to come to my 3, and I'm going to move my decimal 3 points to the left. So that would be 1, 2, 3. So this is where my decimal would go. Oops, there's where my decimal would go. And I would just fill in my zeros. And that would tell me that B is the correct answer. Now, another way to look at this would be to say that since this is 10 to the negative 3, I just think about the 3, I ignore the negative sign, and I do 3 minus 1. 3 minus 1 is 2, so that tells me that I'd put a decimal, then two zeros, and then I would put my 3. Okay, so two different ways to look at this question here. B is the correct answer. I'm going to put the written solution that covers the second way to do this on the screen. If you'd like to, you can pause the video, study it, and then whenever you're ready, we'll move on to the next question. If the two rectangles below are similar rectangles and the scale factor is 4 over 2, what are the lengths of side A and B for the larger rectangle? So now is your chance to pause the video, take all the time you need, try to figure this out, and whenever you're ready, we'll go over the answer. Okay, so basically the first thing that I want to do here is take the scale factor, which is 4 over 2, and I'm just going to simplify this to 2, because 4 divided by 2 is 2. So now what we have to see here is that side, the side that's length 5 on the first rectangle is proportional to side B of the larger rectangle. So if I want to find the length of B, what I have to do is come over here and do 5 times 2. So since 5 times 2 is 10, B is length 10. Now to find the length of side A, I come over to my 7 and I'm going to do 7 times 2. Alright, so since 7 times 2 is 14, I know that side A is length 14. So the correct answer here is D. So now what I'm going to do, if you want to, you can pause the video and you can study the written solution. And if not, that's fine too. But whenever you're ready, we can move on to the next question. Students setting up a club meeting arrange four tables and 22 chairs. What is the ratio of chairs to tables? Is it A, B, C, or D? So now is your chance to pause the video, try to figure this out. And whenever you're ready, we'll go over the answer. So the key here is that we want to see that it's chairs to tables. So what I would recommend is just set up a fraction and write C over T, all right, where C stands for chairs and T stands for tables. Okay, and so now I'm going to take this information up here and I'm going to write another fraction. So since it's 22 chairs, I'm going to put 22 as the top number of my fraction. And since it's four tables, I'm going to put four down here for the tables. So if you got this far and you didn't see the answer over here, know that you were on the right track for sure. Uh, you did really good if you got to this step, but just note that we have to lower the fraction. All right, we have to lower, simplify, reduce, several ways of saying the same thing. Uh, but this is just hopefully a teaching moment here because if you ever get an answer on the test that's a fraction and you don't see it as one of the answer choices, Ask yourself if you need to simplify that fraction because the answer choices are always going to be in simplest form. Now, in this case here, we can do 22 divided by 2, which is 11, and 4 divided by 2, which is 2. And that gives us 11 to 2, which uh, tells us that A is the correct answer here. Now, alternatively, if you ever have a fraction like 22 over 4, you can always just uh, put that in your calculator and the calculator will simplify it automatically for you. And I'll put a link down below. I have a short video. It's under a minute. Uh, it's, it's a short that I, where I show you how to do that in your calculator if you're interested. But A is the correct answer here. So let me put the written solution up on the screen. As always, you can pause the video if you want to and study the solution. And whenever you're ready, we'll go on to the next question. I'm excited to announce that this video's champion shoutout goes to a test taker who says, I passed my math GED today with a 147. I took the test once before and I failed with a 140. I've been out of school for 13 years, never finished high school, and came to America with a dream. I just needed a pass and I did. And I want to wish this person a big congratulations for passing math. 1.5 times 10 to the negative 6 equals which of the following? A, B, C, D, or E. 
So now is your chance to pause the video, try to figure this out, and whenever you're ready, we'll go over the answer. Okay, so there are, again, two ways to think about a question like this. The first would be to just start wherever the decimal is. In this case, it's between the 1 and the 5. And I'm just going to move it to the left six places. So I would go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Okay, and then I just go back and I fill in my zeros. So I would have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 zeros. Okay, now the other way to do it would be to just look at the 6 here and subtract 1, which would be 5. I'm going to put my decimal and I'm going to just put 5 zeros. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and then just write the 1 and the 5. So two different ways to do this. It's up to you to decide which way is easier for you to remember. But A is the correct answer here, and I'm going to let you pause the video, and you can take all the time you need to study the written solution if you want to, and if not, that's fine too. And whenever you're ready, we'll go on to the next question. This next question is the hardest question in the video, in my opinion. You can let me know down below if you think that there was a harder question or if you think this was the hardest. I'll let you try it now. What is the surface area of a rectangular prism with a length of 12 and a half, height of nine and a quarter, and a width of one? Please disregard the units. And just to save you some time, I put the formula for the surface area of a rectangular prism on the screen. It's 2LW plus 2LH plus 2WH. And on the test, you'll have to go to the formula sheet that they'll give you and look up this formula. But just to save you some time, since we're just practicing, I'm just giving you the formula right here. So whenever you're ready, you can pause the video and try this one out, and then we'll go over the answer. Okay, so basically what we want to see here is that if we have a length of 12 and a half, we know that L equals... 12.5 and if we have a height of nine and a quarter that means that h equals 9.25 all right if you think about it this way how much is a quarter a quarter is 25 cents well if it's nine and a quarter it's 9.25 and a width of one is fairly easy to deal with w just equals one Okay, so now all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come up here into this formula and everywhere in the formula where I see an L, I'm gonna write 12.5 and everywhere where I see a W, I just put one and everywhere where I see an H, I'm gonna put 9.25. So let me write this out. Okay, so when we write it all out, we should have two times 12.5 times one plus two times 12.5 times 9.25 plus two times one times 9.25. And you really don't even need to put these ones in here because it's not gonna change anything. But what I would recommend is just put this all in your calculator. And the answer we get is 274.75. A is the correct answer. So let me show you the written solution up on the screen. And as always, you can pause the video and study it if you'd like to.